Well, I am very excited today to be talking to Julia Balaz, and we're going to be talking about our connections with the stars and galactic astrology. But before we get into it, let me just read your bio, Julia, and then we'll dive into our conversation. For many years, Julia felt guided to meticulously study astrological charts of her clients after their QHHT, which are past life regression sessions. She was looking for proof of higher guidance and about the extraterrestrial connections that came up in so many sessions. As a result of analyzing close to 2000 astrological charts from a galactic perspective, she feels called to share her research data confirming epic cosmic orchestration and influence of celestial bodies on our lives, supporting our collective evolution. Julia is a passionate researcher of galactic astrology and soul's evolution, and she shares her fascinating discoveries in her online courses on starseedsteachable.com and on her YouTube channel, called Star Seeds Teachable with Julia. And I'll have the links below so that people can find your website and your other resources. But thank you for doing this today, Julia. Thank you, Heather. I'm deeply, deeply grateful for the opportunity to connect with you this way. So thank you so much for holding space, for allowing this message to come through. <laughs> so why don't we start with you talking a little bit about how you got into doing this and some of what was coming through for you through these sessions that you did. Yes, so some people may be familiar with Dolores Cannon, this extraordinary pioneer in bringing information about other dimensions, other realms, other star systems even, to the collective awareness. Dolores Cannon developed this extraordinary technique called QHHD, quantum healing hypnosis technique, where we hold space and regress people to always the most appropriate time and space mm -hmm. where there are answers for whatever they need at the time to help them heal or evolve. So I believe the modality is so uh, appreciated because it's not the hypnotist that is deciding what's best for the client, but we are really holding space and allowing clients own higher self to decide what is best for them at that time. So we always say, you know, for the next scene, what is the most appropriate time and place. So as I was doing QHHD full time for several years, holding space for people from all walks of lives who just wanted some answers about why their life is a certain way, why they have certain issues that they can't seem to get through. They were taken to many different past lives on earth, but also many of them were taken to lives that did not look like earth, completely different atmosphere conditions, different types of bodies. Many of them had kind of light bodies. There was no form, but there was a strong awareness of them feeling like a light body and awareness of other light beings within the same space interaction that was completely telepathic full of love full of compassion and full of wisdom as well so and then of course some information about the locations of these places where is this which star system which planet so it was just mind-blowing to witness this over the many years and I believe, you know, naturally, as any other QHHD practitioner would testify, my own consciousness was expanding rapidly. I believe my brain as well was stimulated each time because you literally for four hours sit in a very focused awareness and you are kind of going in on the journey mm -hmm. with them. So my brain was in theta state daily for many hours. So somehow I started tapping into these other realms and mainly really the quantum field of the Akashic records of soul records so the natural curiosity about astrology was always there since early teens I was lucky to be a member of a really big city library and, and access you know my path in the library was always to the psychology and esoteric section that's where I was hanging but um I was always studying my own personal astrology in my earlier years. But then as QHHD, I was asking each client for their birth details, even though I don't think QHHD practitioners do that. It's, it's not a thing, but it's just my astrology nerd part of me. 
that after their sessions, I was always curious and I enjoyed looking at their charts and just look for clues about whatever they shared about their life story. And then also about their past lives. I was very curious about the lunar nodes. I really wanted to find some proof that they are a real deal. And they really, really are. I did a whole video on just lunar nodes going through every house, every sign uh, recently. It's um, I'm editing it for, for YouTube, where I shared these QHHD stories of different types of past lives that were in perfect correlation with clients' nodes. And these clients, they have most of them, 99%, they didn't know their astrology. They didn't know about their nodes, but their higher self showed them the most relevant lifetime, let's say, a soldier for someone who had South Node in Aries, or uh, a philosopher or scribe when someone had South Node in Sagittarius. And um, so that was amazing, amazing kind of a hobby, I, would, I had to say, that or entertainment even, that was really revealing how divinely orchestrated our lives are and how there is this higher intelligence that is working with us and it almost feels at some point like it wants us to see the clues through the planets, through studying the planets, through studying the stars, like it wants to speak to us and communicate with us and exchange with us. So it's. Um, I would like to encourage everyone else who is astrology enthusiast to continue looking at stars and start tapping into greater aspects of our being because the information is really there so that was kind of the beginning of the story and if you don't mind I'll continue the lunar nodes was the first part and then when I started attracting more and more clients who were tapping to past lives that were in different star systems and different planets and maybe it wasn't even my attraction point maybe it was just a time where you know collectively we are starting to access higher aspects of our being or tapping beyond solar system so more and more people naturally were accessing this about their own soul journeys so when more of the extraterrestrial sessions started happening around that time i realized of course we can track the fixed stars with the zodiac degrees as well so that's what i started looking at some point and the biggest epiphany and very emotional moment was when there was a client who had a very strong connection to what appeared as a Syrian collective. And on that day, Sirius was conjuncting, I honestly can't remember now if it was the Sun or Mercury. It was one of these two. There was a conjunction linked to their natal chart. And also in their natal chart, they had Sirius A conjuncting some of the planets. So I thought it was just so extraordinary for me deciding on what, what day they'll come and have their session usually it was many months in advance it seemed just such a random thing yet on that day they had connection to the star system that they also had conjuncting their natal planets and they were able to then channel their own higher aspects that seemed to be coming from Sirius and just beautiful information was shared and that was one of several others that you know once I knew what I'm what I'm looking for it started just being validated over and over again. So then I started looking at, you know, different alignments and started looking for patterns. What does conjunction mean? Opposition of fixed stars to planet. And then also looking at trying 6,000 squares because they too seem to have a story to tell. So over the years, I just have this huge pile of A4 sheets for each client with lots of little notes. And uh, yeah, now I'm sharing it with others. And the nicest thing is that I'm not the only one there seem to have been hundreds upon hundreds of other astrologers that also were just from within their own curiosity guided to start looking at fixed stars and uncovering very similar information as I do. I just happen to act on my excitement, share it, and then uh, bring people with the same passion for this together. And now we just kind of grow together, walk side by side with excitement, discovering more. It's beautiful. So it's really a field that's just unfolding now as you're doing more and more exploration and discovery. It's beautiful. And it does feel, as you were saying, that this is a time where we're being called into more of that galactic consciousness yes. and to 
really realize our place in the larger cosmos and remember our interconnectedness with I'm proud other of planets, other stars. Yes, very exciting. You know, I know in Dolores Cannon's work with her hypnosis with different people, she really felt like there were three waves of people that were coming from other star systems to our planet in part to support us in this profound time of transition that we're in as a planet to help us move into higher consciousness. Did you discern some of that in your experience as well? Yes. And thank you so much for bringing it up because there are many questions that arise with what she shared. She shared very particular dates of when people were born and their age at this time, first, second, and third wave. And I found that there are exceptions to each of the waves that she identified. There are exceptions with everything, including galactic astrology, right? So um, there, absolutely. And there also seems to be the fourth wave now, (laughs) which uh, she didn't get a chance to get data on and share about but there is a fourth wave now as well that um, many psychics and people who are in tune with kind of soul frequencies they call them diamond souls before Mm -hmm. that we had crystal souls before that we had indigo souls and there's rainbow in between there as well and um, but when i when we were regressing people through their different lives people who identified as first waiver and in particular the you know, the hippie movement and one love, one go- or no government. Baby boomers. Yes. So they would be identified as first waiver by Dolores Cannon. And they really had the hardest time because they were coming from these beautiful worlds that are fifth density and higher, all about unity, love, compassion, truth, transparency. They had they were diving in as the pioneers, volunteers to these dense families with a lot of trauma, abuse, and so many issues. So many of them had to cope, you know, with alcohol or or drugs and or, or whatever other way to just kind of numb the huge contrast between their soul, beautiful essence, and the density of their physical bodies, most of all, that were so conditioned by abuse and misuse of power. So we thank them for their courage. And then the second wave, it would be my generation, are souls that are, yes, still, they got some drift of that heaviness and conditioning of of trauma of the past, but we have a lot of information available to us to help us understand all that and transcend it and then help others heal. So I call the second waiver the the healers, teachers, Mm -hmm. guides who are here to help perhaps the younger generation to to activate sooner than we did and sooner than the first waiver so then we have the third wave volunteers that come from higher density worlds who are unfortunately diagnosed as adhd add and uh, drugged with all kinds of medication to make them fit in but they're not meant to fit in they're really coming to break the outdated rules of our society and um, I believe they, they will become activated fully into their mission in their adulthood and uh, they'll create changes that we, the second waivers and first waivers can hold safe, safe space for. And then the fourth wave, these uh, diamond children that are coming in now, they're just out of charts, <laughs> high frequency. They're really master souls and um, could be highly triggering as well. The diamond frequency seems to be quite triggering because there is just absolute truth in that when you're when you're in the presence of someone like that, there can be no deceit. So it's quite fascinating how this frequency of source is coming through waves, and we can take it. You know, it's like um, there is a grace in the delays of all these changes because if it all happened at once, our bodies would not be able to take it. I saw it so many times in QHHT sessions whenever clients connected with their highest aspect that felt like source or was source the there's just like waterfalls of tears and hyperventilation and just you cannot really cope in that frequency in the physical body and do your everyday chores it's very high 
uh, contrast to what we live in now. So there is a grace in the delay and in a slow, gradual ascension process. Um, do you agree? Yes, and I think it's beautiful because it's been a sequenced, paced process that's helping prepare us to move into the new paradigms of the new earth. And I also feel like where it, it coincides with some of the shifts that are happening with the cosmic energies coming into the earth and how that's activating different earth ley lines. You know, I don't know if you are aware of yes. Rory Duff's work, but he and I had a conversation about that. So I think those energies are supporting us all in moving into a more expanded consciousness. So the timing of these beings being here that are helping us into those higher frequencies is really beautifully paced with the process that we're in collectively on the planet. But I think, Julia, you're also talking very um, powerfully about some of the challenges to hold those higher frequencies on the planet. And, you know, I'm thinking from my background also as a psychologist and a neuropsychologist about the people that uh, many of us who are known as highly sensitive people and the, the characteristics of those highly sensitive people often are very similar to those coming from these higher frequency stars or planets. And also as a neuropsychologist, I was involved in testing some of these children labeled as ADHD. And it was so clear to me that they were just holding a different consciousness and needed support in being in their uniqueness and learning in the very different ways that they learned and being able to be in the very different energies they were bringing here. But, but our culture tends to try to fit everyone into the conventional mold and yet this is a time where we're being called into radical transformation individually and collectively as we move into the Aquarian age and into this new dimensional frequency. What an amazing validation. Yes, absolutely. Through our own experience. One story comes to mind very quickly where a mother connected with higher aspect of her a child that was nonverbal. I believe the boy was maybe around six years of age and he was still not um, verbally communicating. So through this regression, it's possible to connect with higher aspect of family members. And uh, he was communicating through her in her own session, saying that he is not interested in learning how to communicate with words because his role, his mission is to teach us to communicate telepathically and through other senses. So mm -hmm. it was such a epiphany for her and she stopped fighting that reality, that experience and just surrendered to it and started just opening up to the teachings that he was bringing through for her and the family and everyone else. So yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's profound. I had a colleague who uh, used to work quite extensively with autistic children and she really believed in her own tuning into many of them intuitively, she felt like many of them were here actually not to be engaged in living an ordinary life on the planet, but holding certain energies for the planet and emanating, channeling certain energies by not actively engaging. Yes, I literally see them as little diamonds or crystals, antennas for anchoring mm -hmm. that higher frequency and um, especially autistic children, just pure joy, right? And that's what we really needed as a just shower and massage the whole planet with that frequency of consciousness of pure joy when they're allowed to, to, to be that way. One thing with these higher frequency, higher caliber souls, not only it's difficult for them to be very sensitive and feel the contrast of the heavy environment around them, but... At the age, you know, when they mature, and oftentimes as well, actually in, in childhood, it's really hard for them to not be perfect the way they are used to in higher densities. They really have such a high standard for, for living, and they really are 
upset when they are not performing at their best or when they struggle, when they cannot cope with emotions, like when they cannot, when they, when the situation with someone else is not perfect or when they're not succeeding in their business, they really struggle not living in perfection as they did before. So if anyone resonates with this, if you struggle with that too, you, you have to just not be so hard on yourself and realize that you are an earth human right now and you it takes time to master the experience. So just let go of guilt and self-judgment and instead through self-compassion, self-love, you'll do much better going forward. Would you agree as well? That Oh, that's beautiful. Beautifully said, Julia, because as you know, a lot of my work is how do we integrate that soul self with our human experience. And to me, some of the gift of astrology is it really helps us be in that deeper soul to soul conversation with someone. And yet, um, whatever um, our so wherever our soul has come from, past lives either on this earth or other star systems, we are here in this incarnation somehow integrating that soul self, that higher self with this um, embodied experience in this lifetime. So I think part of the, the you know, work that I try to do is how to help people heal the ways that they, they feel that disconnect mm -hmm. and find that way to be integrating that higher self, that soul self and embodiment to be able to experience the joy of being in this physical reality and being able to experience the range of emotions that we experience on this planet. Because wouldn't you say, what's your sense from some of the people that you've talked to from other stars or, or planets? It feels like part of what makes Earth unique is that it is the planet where we really explore and experience the full range of emotional reality. Yes, a story comes to mind with a lady who wanted to, in her session through hypnosis, she wanted to go home. She wanted to go to her star system, wherever it was. She didn't know where, but she just knew she's not from here. And uh, when she connected with the essence of her higher self, she first started crying for feeling this profound connection of what she was looking for but then she started laughing just this out, out loud belly laugh giggling and I had to wait until she will be able to speak <laughs> through through that laughter but she said I realized this is the best place to be I, I wanted to be here for this ride for this extraordinary experience of everything that's happening in our times there is nowhere else better than on earth right now and many were lining up to come and not many were able to but she mm. said this is the best place to be right now in these times so that was a good one yeah oh that's beautiful and it is that you know and i i do believe that it is that profound wisdom that was known in ancient cultures and known by shamans that we can when we really reclaim that experience of being energy beings we can play with without identifying with the forms that we're in in this realm and just experience the exquisite creative expression of being in form. And, you know, the shamans have that capacity to even shape shift and experience being the eagle, being the salmon, being the human. But it feels like that's part of what we're opening up to, both by regaining those gifts with telepathic communication reclaiming that sense of our interconnectedness and our being energy beings, that this is the possibility of what we can move into, which is so amazing and, and exciting. So beautifully said. And yes, indeed. And it, that occurred in so many sessions as well, that the higher self decided that the best moment in time for the person is to be an eagle and have the higher perspective and that transform them or become a flower uh, literally one session, the lady became a lotus, but she started in the mud deep down and she was like, why am I here? What's what's happening until she realized that through the epiphany of that she is stuck in the mud in her life, in the anxious experience and uh, difficult family situation, but she also can 
shift her perspective from the roots up and see the amazingness of world that is higher up. <laughs> so yeah, we can, if once we realize, as you said, that we are energy that, and through consciousness, we can tap to different things. It can be so liberating. Yeah. Well, and part of my um, focus in my work is if enough of us reclaim that awareness of who we are and that we are galactic beings and reclaim that higher consciousness and hold that and and really emanate that energy for the collective it will help the collective shift it will really allow the collective consciousness to move into that higher frequency to then be able to create the new earth Absolutely. I feel we are already living it, right? It seems to become easier and easier and easier for people to start accessing that awareness. And um, I had often clients coming to me, and especially in the later years, like the more recently, a farmer or a teacher or whoever, they would just say, like, suddenly one day I was perceiving everything differently. I suddenly was able to feel the tree, which before I didn't. I was able to communicate with the cows which before I wasn't able to or there was a client's grandmother who was a stern woman who never really believed in anything that she couldn't see or touch and then one morning she woke up just kind of half asleep half awake she saw this beautiful golden dew in her room for so long that it completely transformed her perspective and suddenly she was a believer in something more beautiful and greater than she thought she was or this world was and she became much more softer and approachable so it is happening just spontaneously to more and more people. And unfortunately, some of them, especially if they were brought up in very strong control environment, they think they're losing it. They're losing the plot and they go and talk to psychiatrists and then get medicated, fortunately. Not too many, but it's happening. But uh, it's really the multidimensional expansion of our being well, and it's, it's it's so exciting that that's happening, and it's it's interesting. In, and I heard part of one of your videos where you talk about the double grid that we experience around the Earth, that there is this increasing awakening and light energy. And many of my clients, and it's been an experience myself in meditation, see this healing grid around the Earth of light energy. And yet we're also in a time on the planet where we're having to clear the darker energies, the shadow of our experience as humanity on the planet, as well as I wonder if there, if you're aware of darker energies that have infiltrated our planet from other systems as well. But I think that's part of the challenge in this time is how do we uh, clear those shadow aspects of ourselves, bring those aspects of ourselves into consciousness to heal and clear in order to support an integrative movement into this higher consciousness. Thank you for bringing this to um, forefront. Whenever clients in QHHD sessions had question for their higher self about the global situation and that darker grid that and the infiltration and deception and manipulation that is occurring through all kinds of um, forces, the higher selves unanimously would always say, do not concern yourself about the external reality that is presented to you through mass media that is heavily controlled. You make a difference by integrating your own shadows, your own, you know, own your own reality, everything that is happening to you, step it up in terms of how you judge or not judge, be more compassionate, not just towards others, but towards yourself. They really were guiding every single higher self was guiding them to refocus to in here and live from inside out rather than from outside in. And that that's where the power lies. That's how they will then be guided through their higher guidance to intuitively navigate, no matter what will occur, no matter how, what challenge will be presented, they will be able to navigate it safely, joyfully, in abundance. So it's, it's just like a program of distraction and uh, bringing us down, but get out of it and just back within. So beautiful, beautifully said. So it's really about claiming our own empowerment and doing our own inner work 
and not getting caught into the collective energy of fear or confusion, which lowers our frequency mm -hmm. and then pulls us into that energy. Mm -hmm. So that's I can, uh, I can now recall some of the clients who would revisit after a year or two. I would have had a lady who came, I think, three or four times. And so I could see the progression of her consciousness as she was applying the wisdom that she was receiving through her higher self. And at one particular point, she came worrying that she is not caring anymore. She felt like she's detaching from this world, from this reality completely, because she was always at peace, no matter what was presented. She was just always in, in this neutral state of being. And she started worrying, is she maybe just losing it or detaching too much? Is it carelessness? It was, you know, such a... <laughs> such a contrast to what she was before where she was driven by emotions by whatever was presented reacting to everything and the higher self in that session said that this is not not caring you're simply you're creating this healthy detachment yet you have this beautiful higher awareness of truth of what mm -hmm. is being presented and you're like anchored in your own being and she started noticing, then she realized how much of her higher self was actually becoming much more embodied in her physical body than ever before, and how she's now impacting others, and how she was then guided to start working with that high frequency and start kind of plugging it into the earth, into the environment, into whatever she saw it was needed to just kind of own the self-mastery that she's reaching and then work with that. Oh, beautiful. It sounds very Uranian too. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> beautiful. And yet it's some of those that I see that are carrying more of that Neptunian energy and are very empathic. Mm -hmm. Part of the challenge for them is how to feel. They're so tuning into what's in the collective, how to feel that, then release it to come back to their own energy and that sense of peace and love and higher consciousness, but to let it be fluid, to not get pulled into identifying with the energies around them. So it, it feels like depending on the energies that they carry or the mm. star systems they've come from, there are different ways of working with this, the challenges of this transitional time. Absolutely. For example, Beta Centaurians, like whenever there is someone who has a lot of Beta Centauri conjunct opposition in their in their charts, and they if they remember where they come from, it seems to be a civilization that is so beautiful, really, it feels like utopian or like heavenly uh, experience where every time everyone is in love with everyone and people work together towards collective improvement. And so these souls they seem to really struggle with the conditional love here on earth and they struggle until they're guided to realize that they came here to bring frequency of unconditional love and to start emanating it and demonstrating it in a healthy way of course so that's when they realize you know what I, what i was looking for outside of me is actually inside of me and then everything starts shifting the reality uh, changes quite significantly so i think that is a big message for many of the star seeds that you, you came here to bring something to contribute with that higher frequency and lead by example rather than being frustrated that it's all wrong here right <laughs> it's not like my home <laughs> How do you see um, people's experience of having strong connections to one or more of the four royal stars? Yeah, they're, they're usually have, um, these are usually in charts of people that not only have either one of those four royal stars, but they usually have also other fixed stars conjuncting or opposing. It feels like these royal stars are in charts of what I call multigalactic travelers or souls, souls that seem, feel really ancient, incredibly wise, and very much in that kind of leadership position. Those that are more with Falmahout, um, Royal Star in Pisces a constellation, they have this beautiful, they, they are the softest, I would say. They have this beautiful, soft, graceful frequency. It feels like Christ consciousness, very calm, very um, like Piscean, like Neptune, um, but they're very like that, former hot, conjuncts especially. And uh, the Regulus royal star, they feel more royal, like Regulus. They, you can really see that frequency coming through in their life, how they 
uh, embody that and they feel called towards more leadership uh, positions where eventually they realize that they're here to uplift others through their own creativity, through their own self-expression rather than looking for attention. It's, it's not like that. And then Antarians, I've came across a lot of them because I have two strong conjunctions. My Jupiter and my Uranus is uh, conjuncting Antares. So I, I have a lot of that energy in my life and Aldebaran too. And with these, I find, especially with Antarians conjuncts, not just me, but also others, they almost seem to act like a amplifier for higher consciousness access. I see it a lot with QHHT practitioners that they would have Antares in their chart. And somehow what was revealed to me is that you we act like uh, jumping leads for others to tap to their other dimensions that are higher formers. experience. Yes. And um, and then Aldebaran, it, it, there's such a fine line between Aldebaran and, and Antares. They're kind of opposing each other quite precisely. Aldebaran also very much strong leadership and um, sense of sovereignty and justice and protection and making sure that things are getting in harmony and balance and that there is no deceit that they feel quite inspired to get things right. Does that answer the question? That's beautiful. You know, what's really fascinating listening to you is that, I mean, you've come from gaining so much of this understanding through these hypnosis sessions and people's direct experience of those star systems. Whereas as you and I were talking in earlier conversations, a lot of my work is through connecting to those stars or star systems shamanically. And how do we allow ourselves to connect to those energies and uh, let them move in us or through us. And, And the shamanic experiences of those energies are very similar to what you just described. I'm so glad. It's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. Yeah. They are very real, tangible frequencies of consciousness, of archetypes that are coming through us. It feels like stars want to be here with us. They have descended and they are like we are aspect fragments of stars. And to be honest, in some of the sessions, several, the clients felt like I'm the star. I and the star and I'm shining my light on wherever I'm shining light on. And I recall one who felt strong awareness and connection of all the other stars. Like they, they reach that kind of level of consciousness where they knew that the other, that they're communicating just with the other stars, but they were a star or the others were a planet. Uh, so it feels like, yeah, we are fragments of an incredibly playful cosmic <laughs> create our consciousness and it's fun now that we are paying attention and more is being revealed it's just extraordinary well, that's that's beautiful and that's fascinating do you do you feel because this is some of my sense that as we expand and move into this higher consciousness we are in fact moving back into unity consciousness and then we feel our interconnectedness with the cosmos with cosmic consciousness and can really find those experiences of the different stars of the different energies it's all within us so rather than it literally necessarily being i've come from a past life on that star system it's all a part of all of us as we open in that more expansive way and can feel our interconnectedness with all that is I often pondered that, often thought of that, and you just put it into words beautifully. Yes, that 100% resonates. And um, I believe when we identify that, okay, these are my past lives, it's just a temporary stage until we realize what you just said there. And Mm -hmm. then it's all part of the ocean, and we just tapped into a certain area of the ocean. We claim it temporarily until we realize it's actually not mine, it's everyone's, right? Yeah, beautifully said. So it's not, I mean, we still sort of on this, uh, in this dimensional frequency, keep thinking of things in a more linear way um, through this incarnational history. And I've had this past life in this star system, and now I'm here, but it's actually all happening simultaneously. And it's all a part of our consciousness now. Yes. Big time. I feel it. 
Yeah. So as you're working, you're, you're both working with people who are studying galactic astrology and also helping others connect to those energies. And it feels like a, a part of the bigger mission that you're engaged in, which parallels the work that I'm doing, is how do we help hold this higher frequency for the planet and help people remember who they are, remember what they're capable of, so that we can move through this transformation in a, a gentle way, a conscious way, and um, really expand in, into these new ways of being to be supporting the creation of the new earth. Absolutely. So beautifully said again. What I appreciate about galactic astrology the most in witnessing others experiencing it, discovering what stars are in their natal chart, is seeing how much easier it is for those individuals to release the trauma conditioning of their limited identity until that point. They still feel not good enough and all other labels that they accepted based on the collective conditioning that they grew up with. But once they see that there are so much more than that, and it's black and white on the paper, it's mm. for sure there. They, for the first time, give themselves permission to release those limited identities and open up to much more. And the healing journey begins. And I am I haven't seen anyone to use it, at least people that come to me to use it for their ego blasting mm -hmm. journey. It's not like that at all. It's actually very intimate, very humble, very healing, transformational experience. Until then, at some point, they don't need even those star seed labels anymore. And they feel very much like part of this greater cosmic intelligence. And um just then embody that, invite it into their bodies and live, live it. So it's just a stage. Mm -hmm. oh, that's, that's beautiful, very powerful. And it feels like you're also doing a lot of collaborative work with other people that are supporting people in that journey with the trainings that you do with the groups that you yeah, are, so are I was I was very encouraged by, so it started with, sharing these conversations with QHHD clients that came to me who expressed curiosity about no, wanting to know more. It was a point where I was repeating same stories over and over. And I said, I, let's just put it all in, in an easy to follow system like online course. So I was just sending the links uh, to, to people where they could easily find it. And then I started attracting people who are really into astrology and researching this on their own in their own time as well so we went deeper on the topic and it's these people that gave me courage to come out more and speak about it more openly because I was always kind of in the closet spirit junkie and so yeah I received a lot of encouragement from others to the, because it made sense it resonated so we created then the second course the first one is for newbies it's called galactic astrology 101 and then the second course is for practitioners, because then there were people that uh, kept coming to me at the point of their life when they were ready for complete transformation, when they were when they knew that they can no longer do the job they were doing and they were looking for something different. And most of them have this strong Sagittarian energy or uh, Gemini or Scorpios, researchers, uh, Virgos. So there is just this similar uh, collective consciousness where we are coming together. So for them, then there was a lot of um, friendly pressure to put more information in to help them actually start this as their own business. So I just shared everything I learned along the way of starting my own QHHT business, Soul Alignment and so on, so on. I just shared what I knew and the feedback has been really amazing. And as it's growing rapidly, they are all uh, encouraged to step up as fellow leaders, fellow teachers, fellow guides. I by, I really don't want to present myself as, um, as I don't know, special in any way, because I see they are so much more gifted and talented and they are receiving an amazing information. So we kind of just hold space for each other and share and grow together. Enjoy.
Well, Very what's different. beautiful about that, Julia, is it's so a reflection of the new paradigms that we're meant to move into that you really emanate and you hold space for that because it is about that that kind of collaboration and really connecting in communities in these new ways to share what we know and to be supporting each other in this transformation, in this expansion of consciousness. It's so, so much more enjoyable than the old way where everything is on your shoulder and you control everything. That's, we are done with that, I would say, collectively, hopefully. Yeah, it's so much more fun this way. So how would you guide people as, as we're in this really intense turbulent time on the planet right now in terms of how they can hold these higher energies in the midst of the shift. How do you support people in that? So I would bring attention to transits. It's really good to keep an eye on what is happening in the sky and then tuning in with how is it affecting me personally and how can I leverage that? How can I keep receiving whatever wants to come through and then integrating it, applying it in the li- in my life and then doing the next step and the next step. Just start wherever you are with whatever you have, whatever you understand and just keep growing little by little. I, I feel it's crucial for us to embody evolution because that's what we that's what nature wants. It wants evolved species. And if we are not evolving, it's we will crumble with the old and be gone. So just hang on to evolution uh, journey and do whatever you can. And so the transits of planets and fixed stars or planets con- you know, in aspect to fixed stars, they can reveal so much information. And I've seen it over and over where people are through very particular transits that are relevant to their, to their natal chart. They receive these extraordinary downloads and personal inner transformation of perspective and embodiment of their higher octave of being. So it's the transits that hold the keys to that. I believe in some old alchemical book, uh, in, that's when I was really into in my uh, mid-teens, it, some, there was a sentence somewhere that personal alchemy has to go hand in hand with astrology and with the understanding of stars in the mm-hmm. sky. You know, and I see it also through QHHT sessions where people go and whoever had the most significant, really powerful transformations, they would have a lot of transit going on in their eighth house or Scorpio that was always there. It's major. So it's worth, you know, anyone who is on a personal journey of um, kind of personal development, transformation, you will find so much wisdom and support in astrology. So I highly encourage everyone to give it a go. <laughs> that's that's such great advice. And I would also say that I do believe that these uh, stars, energies, and their archetypal wisdom is there for all of us, wherever we've had our recent experiences to, you know, a lot of what I do in my own meditation practice and encourage other people to do is to draw in the energy of the sun, our star, draw in the energy of Sirius or Orion and really allow them to guide us in holding that higher consciousness that we are choosing to incarnate here at this time to be a part of this journey of transformation. But we can remember that we're much more than that and and draw on these energies that are here to support us in this process. And the other piece of that, I think, that I'd love to hear your take on is really connecting with the galactic center, with that source, and ultimately that, that sense of the oneness of all that is. But what do you see in your experiences with people who have a strong connection with the galactic center? Oh, it's mighty. It's really special, really powerful. So anyone having conjunct galactic center to any of their planets, they seem to have the archetypal energy of that planetary consciousness magnified so many fold in their um, experience. There's just this magnitude of energy of that consciousness and it feels very 
a cosmic, very like creator, divine archetype of divine feminine, divine masculine, unified already. They really are embodying that. And depending what planet it's coming through, that's how their unique way of bringing, anchoring that source consciousness comes through and then depending on the houses as well i've noticed that it's that area of life where that cosmic mind energy is most activated so it's really nice and i also noticed that if um, there is no conjunct uh, or opposite alignment to galactic center if anyone just looks where is galactic center on their map uh, in their natal chart which house uh, depending what system you use you start reflecting if perhaps that how that area of life is it more um, infused with higher consciousness are you more inspired to have this higher cosmic perspective in that particular area of your life do you feel much more called to embody that higher frequency of source there it really is um, i've seen it through so many people so and uh, one more observation with galactic center specifically conjunct or someone who would have conjunct and opposite galactic center through two different planets or through nodes a south north node conjunct opposite there these are truly inspirational people they feel special you have this sense of being in the presence of a ascended master or this really inspirational leader who is very humble about it these are never um, you know uh, ego and forceful preachers these are very soft really masterful deep wisdom uh, comes through them and uh, what i've noticed it almost feels like that galactic center conjunct opposition in a chart acts like a stargate straight to the source or like they came straight from source as fragments of source or they are somehow able to to channel it easier than someone who wouldn't necessarily have that and i would hate to create uh, you know, I'm better than you perspective on it, because it's not like that. Every single chart has something extraordinary in it, every single chart. So what's your unique way of bringing that specialness of source through to us? Oh, beautiful. This work that you're doing is really beautiful and profound. And I just, while we have a few minutes left, I just want to um, explore a little bit more what you were just talking about, which feels so rich in terms of finding the complexity of what is coming through in the chart. And, you know, a lot of what I experience in my work with um, people looking at the chart is I've truly come to believe that in between lives, our soul, and that we're all part of cosmic consciousness, and that in between lives, our soul is determining what our role will be, what our purpose will be, what our experience will be in that next incarnation. And the chart so powerfully reflects that. But part of what you're talking about that I think is really fascinating is, so you're looking at how these star energies may then manifest through a planet in a particular house. So even if someone has these very powerful connections with particular star energies, it's still manifesting in a very unique way in them based on the planet it's emanating through and then the part of life, the house it's manifesting in. Is that what yes, you're saying? 100% spot on. That's what we are seeing over and over again. And as we go through the planet, starting with Pluto and then all the way towards the sun, we notice that conjunctions that are through to Pluto, Neptune, Uranus, people are feeling, sensing the frequency of those fixed stars and even their memories from those, those fixed stars or memories of source experiencing itself in those star systems, they feel it as a very distant past. And the personal planets feel, feel, feel much more recent. And then sun, moon, and ascendant feel very present as if they just came from there. Wow, interesting. Yeah. That makes so much sense. And um, then, of course, Lilith, Chiron, Vertex, and all the other points, they all also have clues and keys to more information uh, in relation to fixed stars. It's very much there, too. Beautiful. This is, this is really profound and so cutting edge, I think, in terms of where we are with astrology, but where we are also with our human consciousness and what we're opening up to. So 
Very thank exciting. you for this amazing work that you're doing. Thank you for allowing me to share a little bit about these exciting times we live in. And um, happy to see how many people are hungry to know more and eager to step up as guides that are ready to hold space for others to gently, softly awaken to other realms. I, it's really nice to see how much compassion and peace is becoming more and more present in our uh, collective consciousness, at least in, in, in the reality that I'm seeing, people that I'm connecting with, really most beautiful, beautiful souls. Like we are so blessed with a huge amount of what I call master souls, like never before, I'm sure. So I'm very excited about the future. It's just still turbulent times that are ahead, but we got this. <laughs> right <That's> beautiful <laughs> well in my sense is that this is such a profound time where there is more and more of this awakening and more and more of this gathering of higher consciousness and those of us holding that energy to support others in healing and transforming but ultimately it's a choice point for the planet and if people need to continue to work through their karmic experiences or their emotional transformational experiences in this other dimension, then there may be this divide of earth in different dimensions, but that we each can be choosing that in that process where, where we are and where we want to be and experiencing this transformation. Oh, Is that absolutely. your sense of it also? Yes, and such a great point that, yes, we can get totally lost in studying the cosmic divine orchestration of everything, but it's all about those everyday little choices that we make that really make a difference in our lives. So, yeah, great point. Thank you so much for everything you do too, Heather. I really look forward to keep watching from um, as a, uh, you know, on your YouTube channel, seeing your work and just being in awe when you present your wisdom to us is such a expansive and healing and beautiful experience to watch you uh, so thank you so much for being you <laughs> well thank you julia and thank you for the profound work that you're doing and for the energy that you're holding for others in this time wow. so i will have the links to your uh, website and your resources below this video but thank you for for what you're doing big hug much love take care everyone <laughs> Blessings. Bye-bye.